Are you aware of the three most common traps that new homeschooling moms fall into? Today, we're diving into the three major pitfalls that new homeschoolers face, how mastering these challenges are key to a successful, sustainable, and enjoyable homeschool journey. But to be honest, I've made all three of these mistakes. So I'm not much of a gardener. I don't like bugs, dirt, the sun, worms, just none of it. So this might be my fault, but in May, two years ago, we moved from Florida to Kansas and our house is surrounded by beautiful flowers, just gorgeous. And we've got like a vegetable a vegetable garden thing going and tomatoes and all the things. And it was just absolutely beautiful. Then December came, well, actually more like November and everything just died. Like it went from this like luscious, beautiful green grass and beautiful garden to just brown and gray and naked and dead. So when April came, and it looked the same, I was like, okay, we're gonna have to replant. We're gonna have to um, go and find new gar- uh, new flowers and new vegetables and different things like that um, because the house really looks naked without any of those things. And so we're driving around to different nurseries and we're getting everything priced out and it's, hun- guys, I didn't know flowers was so expensive, okay? Like it's a whole, <laughs> other thing that I did not take into account with becoming a new homeowner is like the cost of flowers like the landscape alone was going to cost us hundreds of dollars and it just wasn't in the budget so I'm just like our house is just going to have to be ugly for like years until we can afford to replant everything and then May came and guys all them things that I thought was dead (laughs) They came back to life and it was beautiful again. And the the trees blossomed and they started off like with white flowers that then fell off and turned into green and the garden came back and it was just beautiful. And so I came to realize that rather than going out and looking for the new new, I didn't see the potential of what was right in front of me, of what I already had and what someone else had already planted. So all this reminded me of when I first started homeschooling and I purchased $450 worth of curriculum for my four-year-old. It was the works, it was all the things, only to come to find out, spoiler alert, the curriculum wasn't gonna work for him didn't jive well with his learning style or with my teaching style. And so I needed to find out what to do with this curriculum. And through my research, I was like, oh, I can resell the curriculum. And so at the time I went on eBay to try to resell it. And I'm like, this is a brand new curriculum and I'm selling it on eBay for like half the price after barely using it. Why didn't I come here first? Why didn't I come (laughs) and look to see what somebody else had already planted or what was already here, what somebody else had already purchased and try to see if we even liked it? I'm like, if I had purchased it used and tried it, I would have seen that it wasn't gonna work for him and I would have saved hundreds of dollars. And so, In a lot of ways, I could have not only used what I already had, like the library and just my own knowledge because of the fact that I was a preschool teacher and honestly, you should not be spending that much money for a four-year-old. If I had used what I already had, I would have saved myself so much money. So one of the biggest mistakes that new homeschoolers make is just not utilizing what they already have in front of them. And to be honest, if I hadn't made this next mistake, I probably wouldn't even have made that first mistake. So when I first met my husband, he was always like, I don't want an independent woman. No I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T around here. And I was like, 
why? Like, why don't you want an independent woman? And he was like, because an independent woman doesn't need a man. And with every relationship, there should be some healthy dependencies. And he doesn't necessarily believe that everyone in this relationship should be equal, but he does believe that in a relationship, you should complement one another. So where I am weak, he is strong type of situation. Kind of like depend on one another so that we can trust and rely on one another. Now, all that is great for a marriage, but what does that have to do for homeschooling? You might be thinking. The truth is, one of my biggest mistakes as a homeschooler is being I-N-D-E-P-E-N-D-E-N-T. You know what I mean? Because I was an introvert, I truly felt like I didn't need anybody. I could do this on my own. I was fine. Like, we don't need people. <laughs> you got this. But with that, there was no one to seek advice from. There was no one to help me where I was weak. And the truth is, I thought I could do it alone, but I couldn't. You need community. You need advice. <laughs> you need fellowship. You need iron sharpens iron. You need to know not to buy that curriculum brand new when you can find it used. And so I think as new homeschoolers, one of the most important thing that you can get is community. If you're looking for community or if you do not have a community, a local community, I am a part of Made to Homeschool which is a homeschool community for homeschool moms by homeschool moms. And if you'd like some more information about it, definitely check it out in the link in my description. It will be a blessing to you and your home. Speaking of made to homeschool, this is a collaboration with my friend Katie over at Life in the Mundane. Katie and I have a monthly hangout that we host on Made to Homeschool where we come together and it's we talk about balanced perspectives. I take the homemaking side of it and she takes the homeschooling side of it and we tackle different subjects such as burnout or sickness in the home and we come at it through different perspectives with different practical tips and tricks and different things like that. But all that to say, she is going to be talking about more homeschool mistakes, but more focused on the homeschool aspect of things. So definitely check out her video after this one. And let's jump into that last mistake. So I am a scheduler by nature and a multitasker, multitasker by force. I actually really suck at multitasking and I didn't realize it until it was brought to my attention. So I was homeschooling and cleaning and doing doctor's appointments and meal planning at the same time, all of which really made homeschooling frustrating. In addition to that, I was overbooking my days. Like my days were packed to the hilt. Like I was planning a week worth of things in one day and it wasn't good. I cannot stress to you the importance of homeschooling when you homeschool and everything else when you everything else. It is so important and so vital to be present where you are at. Now that's what I talk about on this channel is productivity so that you can be a good steward of your time and be peacefully present in your home. So make sure you subscribe if that's what you're into. And now, if you're gonna homeschool while you're homeschooling and you wanna avoid mistakes when it comes to homeschooling, check out this video right here. 